it's really no big secret that I am not a big fan of, you know, mainstream Christian pop culture music. Um, I'm not a big fan of pop culture music anyways. I think Miley Cyrus and Justin Bieber and that kind of stuff is just about the worst garbage that has ever been produced in the world. With that being said, I, I don't think it's any any secret that I'm really not a big fan of, of what is played on Christian radio either. It's like they try to put as many bad musicians um, into a playlist as possible. I mean, there are good Christian musicians out there. Actually, the, the previous review before this was talking about that. So, I mean, they do exist, but not on Christian radio. And so that really caused me to think, deep thinking. Why is Christian radio a thing? Why, why, or why does it even exist? And and I I believe I have come up with a, a small list. Now obviously this is not an all inclusive list, but still let's move on. So before we get going, there's the obvious statements that always need to be said. First off, don't play the martyr. Oh, there has to be Christian radio because regular radio stations they hate Christians and and there are Christian musicians that make it onto secular radio stations. The trick is you actually have to be good. Now, obviously, I'm drawing the line between worship music and pop Christian music. The difference being worship music is more for a church setting where Christians sing about and to God. Okay, all right. I'm not really criticizing that. Um, there's wide diversity in worship and some songs I absolutely detest, but still, the principle is the same. Uh, but what's on, ra what's on Christian radio isn't really worship music. It's more of some hybrid of trying to combine being a rock star with being a worship leader. And it just doesn't work on so many different levels. And then because it doesn't work well, there's really no poetry in the lyrics. The musicians are not very talented. The singers are I think that they're way more talented than they are. You know, stuff like that. And so then they start playing the martyr. Oh, well, we're just not on, on radio because we're just, you know. They're just, you know, biased. Okay, all right. And I will say this, that some of my favorite Christian bands aren't on radio either. Um, Project 86, for instance. Um, radio pretty much is useless and dying. Like, eventually I see everything going to YouTube and Spotify and Pandora and that kind of stuff. I, I just kind of see radio dying out, which is a good thing. Because with a lot of these things, you can just make their, make your own list instead of listening to what everybody else wants you to listen to. And I mean, yeah, it, it, it'll kind of be a bad thing because you won't learn what new bands are out there. But also it'll be a good thing because you don't have to listen to so much crap. Um, okay, so everything will ha have, an have an audience of some kind. Obviously, I'm not saying that your opinion is stupid. I'm not saying that at all. There will always be... Um, uh, certain people are attracted to certain styles of music, and uh, hey, if Christian, if Christian pop culture music is is your thing, that's fine. You that that's really fine. I'm not I'm not trying to criticize you. What my real criticism here is, how has it gotten to be so popular when it's not that good? Okay. Well, generally speaking, once again, I know that there's different people with different opinions, and music is highly subjective, but we can analyze the actual objective parts about music. Um, the complexity of, of, of the of the lyrics, you know, how they're composed, how they intersect with each other, words used, how big is the writer's vocabulary, um, how skilled are the musicians, how complex are the uh, rhythmic variations. I mean, all kinds of different stuff like that. Um, for those of you who, who have listened to a lot of Christian music, you have a lot of drummers who are, they're like those wind-up monkey dolls. They're not allowed at all to experiment or to really go off you know, and do their own thing, they really have to be stick to the same beats over and over and over again, much to the loss of Christian music. Um, so here's one of the things that, that is absolutely essential for Christian radio to thrive. People are hungry for hope. And that doesn't look like it's going to go away in the future. And because people are hungry for hope, they will look for hope. And because Christian radio offers something that gives them hope of some kind, hopeful music, encouraging stuff, well, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a thing. But uh, that's not one of my main reasons. That's just a side note here. Everyone relates to music. Music is really easy to, uh, to connect to. Um, it makes us feel. It reminds us to feel. Um, it's easy to remember. If you try and remember something and you can't, and then you try and put it to a song, it's way easier to remember it. 
Um, music on Christian radio tends to be overly mild, and so therefore it's less aggressive, less chances of offending people, not in the sense of uh, morally offending, but in the sense of uh, being harsh to listen to, uh, taking a while to adapt. Um, and life is so hectic that music is something you can put on while you're doing something else. You can put it on while you are um, you know, working, while you're at home, while you're sleeping, while you're driving. I mean, life is just so hectic, and, and music is a great way to, to do that. Um, and obviously, there are some talented Christian pop music musicians. musicians. Um, one of them, his name is Michael W. Smith. He's been doing music since like the 80s, and he is a fantastic musician. Now, you don't have to like how he writes lyrics or his music style, whatever. But he is a fantastic musician, nevertheless. Um, he has released some 30-something albums, ranging from kids, you know, lullabies, to um, popular music, uh, you know, like Christian music, uh, to um, uh, um, Christmas music. Obviously, every Christian music, musician seems to make their round there. And then uh, orchestra music. Yes, orchestra music, as in symphony, you know, Orchestra, how diverse is that? And the other thing is, is his melodies are actually good. And he's like, I don't even know, 60, I guess, 60 something. And he's still creating catchy music. And here's the thing. He always adapts to what people are actually listening to. In his newest CD, um, Scratch At, not his newest CD. Um, after he released it, he released a worship CD. And now he's releasing another worship CD that's connected with that worship CD. So Scratch At, it's not his newest one. In his most recent non-worship CD, uh, it's called A Million Lights, um, a lot of diversity there, but if you notice, it really connects to the culture. Whereas if you go back into like the 80s, he sound, it sounded like 80s music. He, he's not tried to say the good old days and stick with you know, how the good old days used to be. He's adapted to make quality music for the audience that actually exists. I mean, he's just a good musician. I hope in my lifetime to be a fraction of the good musician that he is. He's written hundreds of songs, hundreds of songs. Uh, my favorite band, Project 86, I, I don't even know if they've written 150 songs. I think it's just a little bit north of 100, which isn't bad. I, I'm not criticizing them. I'm just saying Michael W. Smith has written hundreds of songs. That's amazing. Um, anyways. So here are the four main reasons that I believe why Christian radio is a thing, why why it has actually prospered. Number one, Christians don't read their Bibles. See, in the early church period, Christians were encouraged by Scripture. I mean, that was their thing, and you know, it's how they it's how they not just learned what to believe in those things. So, and doctrine is important, obviously, but more so than that, Scripture was a source of comfort. I mean, if you look at the Psalms. Um, the book of Psalms was finished after the time of the exile. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. And throughout all of this, there's just these words that people are still relating to thousands of years later. Things that just, that's exactly what I'm going through. You know, when, when you're being treated unfairly, when everything seems to go wrong, when when you know you're facing things that you don't think are fair in life i mean just things that just are so relatable and that's what i'm talking about christians don't read their bibles so they don't really have hope so instead they substitute reading their bibles for listening to music because music is easier to listen to than the bible is to read and i don't think anybody's going to disagree with me there the source a large source of hope and comfort the bible is 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 being put away so that people can instead read uh popular books um, Christian books, obviously, uh, watch televangelists and listen to radio, uh, Christian radio, and instead of reading their Bible. So as a result, they don't really know what to believe, and they just kind of float through life, always looking for a bigger purpose, always wishing that, you know, all their dreams would come through, always getting in petty little arguments, looking for something bigger to come along. Number two, Christians don't pray. The main lifeline between a Christian and God is severed. So as a result, the only thing that is substituted is music, because music helps us to feel without having to do the legwork of seeking God. I think that's, I mean, pretty clear. I don't really feel the need to go on anymore about that. Reason number three, Christians don't do church right. Church in America has become gross. It's become gross. 
It is a place where people go to be entertained one day a week, and that's it. It that it's completely lost what it was meant to be and become entertainment focused and just and not what it's supposed to be. The Christian church is supposed to be a community of people who are there for each other, people who are connecting. And in our modern world, that's what people need. The people are so disconnected. They, they're so hopeless all the time. People need community. The church as it was designed to be is a great idea. The church as what it has become is a terrible idea. People don't want to go to a place where they're just going to feel judged where they're just going to feel like they don't belong, where they're just going to feel like this is a clique that I'm clearly not a part of. We've done the whole clique thing in high school, and then we got to college and realized that high schoolers transferred to college, so the cliques are still there. Then we got into our adult life and realized that there cliques, there's cliques there too. You know, you've got your Republicans and your Democrats and your I'm Libertarian. Oh, well, good for you. You know, everybody's got their little clique. The last thing people need or want is to go somewhere and feel like there's still another click. It doesn't work. And then the last thing on the list, Christians neglect the Holy Spirit. If if you've ever been to church, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Things are very dry. Things are very – or they go to the other extreme, and things just get weird. Everybody's talking in some language that nobody understands, and it's just – it's weird. It gets weird. Uh, you know – and it's not like there's healings or, you know, they're not doing anything for their community. They're just kind of existing, but with their weird prayer patterns. So it's like, hmm. So in the wake of these four terrible things, what has happened is Christian radio has risen to dominance because there's we're, Christians are substituting what should be there. We should have a healthy devotional life. We should have communion with God. We should have the evidence of having communion with God. And we should be connecting with each other. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that if you just seek God, all your problems will go away. You'll never have a single struggle in your life. I'm not saying something like that. It's like that. That's just plain stupid. But I am saying that because we don't do those things, Christian radio has risen to take the place, as have televangelists. Now, once again, I'm not saying that everybody who listens to Christian radio, you know, that they're just not Christian. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying it's more popular than it would have been had Christians actually been doing uh, things that would have given them hope and comfort. I mean, you know, we live in a, in, a, in a world now where people do not value the, the power of community. Everybody thinks that they can do life alone. Um, and then they think that having Facebook friends equates to having community. And just so different. So different. And then there's a science behind it, you know, where music helps us to fill things, where screens, a lot of people go on their iPhones to listen to music, uh, where screen time actually interfix, affects sorry, uh, how we feel. And so there's all those things. So there's a spiritual aspect and there's the physical aspect. And there's all these things combining together. And in the life of a Christian who doesn't know God's power, who doesn't know the power of prayer, it's a perfectly reasonable substitute. Just like why read the Bible, which I don't understand, when I can read a book about Christianity, which will make me feel better. Well, I mean, that's no dot. Why do people eat at McDonald's when they know that it's not healthy for them? Because people really like an instant fix. And it's the same thing with spiritual things. If people aren't willing to spend an extra 10 minutes to cook at home or to get something that's that'll take a little bit longer but that's healthier, then why, oh why, would they bother spending an extra 15, 30 minutes reading a Bible and praying? I mean, this really isn't that hard to, hard to think about here. So with that being said, I, I don't mean to offend anybody, but I do think that um, not that I'm saying Christian radio is wrong or evil or anything, but I do think that we need to seriously start reanalyzing what makes us Christian, what makes us um, what we are, and are we living in such a way where that is reflected? So I hope that that kind of makes sense. But I think there's a, I think these are clear reasons why Christian radio has become so popular, especially because there really isn't that great of music on Christian radio. So there's that. <laughs>